Well, first of all, uh, I must say that this crisis is uh, unprecedented both in scope and uh, in its nature. And uh, as a matter of fact, after almost five years uh, since the very beginnings of the crisis in the U.S., uh, there is still, still not uh, uh, a real understanding or explanation of the crisis on the part of the governments or the ac academic economists or the bourgeois politicians. They still are uh, wandering in the dark. And uh, when, for instance, if you remember when uh, the former governor uh, of the European Central Bank, Trichet, was uh, uh, giving up his, his giving, was uh, ending his mandate as governor, he said uh, this is a systemic crisis, this is a crisis of the system. But uh, this is still not accepted neither uh, or uh, understood by the, those who pretend to be leading the world. And uh, this is particularly true in the case of Europe, because uh, uh, the explosion of the war, crisis of world capitalism meant that uh, all the contradictions and uh, all the weaknesses that were um, uh, thought to be overcome by the, the process of capitalist integration of Europe and the uh, building of the single currency uh, now have exploded in the most uh, catastrophic manner. And uh, this means that uh, several countries, amongst them Italy certainly, are now on the verge of uh, bankruptcy and uh, of a, a crisis with an uh, uh, unknown outcome. As far as Italy is concerned, uh, this will be the fifth year in a row in which the real uh, income of the families will, fa will, will fall. And uh, the, in the first period, uh, most of the people thought that uh, it was just a question of waiting some time, maybe make some sacrifices and uh, wait uh, for things to fix in some way uh, and then uh, normal life would start again. But the truth is that uh, nothing of this uh, happened and uh, therefore there is a, an increasing questioning and a, and a, and a great uh, uh, tension society about uh, what the future will look like, how, how the future will look like. Uh, on top of that, uh, people look at Greece and now look at Spain. They see a catastrophic uh, crisis in, both in private and in public uh, finances. They see mass movements of protest, mass political confrontations. And uh, everybody understands that uh, more sooner than later, all this will come to Italy too. And uh, if, if this did not happen up until now, is mainly for because uh, those who should be uh, in the position of uh, uh, giving ex expression to all this anger, this fear, and this uh, opposition, I mean, particularly the trade union leaders and uh, the leaders of the left parties uh, have made desperate efforts to avoid any uh, mass movement, any mass protest to, to, come, to come out. And uh, this is another important feature, I think. Uh, what we see almost everywhere, certainly in Greece, in Italy, but also in Spain, in Germany, is that uh, the existing political system, the existing political parties, both uh, on the right and uh, the so-called reformist party, I mean, the socialist parties, the social democratic parties, or the democratic party in Italy, all these try to, to, to cling together, to, to come closer to each other, because uh, they, they are all, um, so they, they, are, they are called by the ruling class to fulfill their national duty, as they put it, it is to save 
the what they call the nation, which means to say their uh, banks, their enterprises, their, uh, and their money, basically. And uh, it's uh, almost like a, uh, a war coalition. Uh, just one week ago, the Italian uh, Prime Minister Monti said we are at war. And he said we are at war to save Italy, to stay in the Euro, but what they actually mean is we are at war against the against the workers, against the pensioners, against the youth, uh, in order to, f to withdraw every single reform and every single uh, element of the welfare state, uh, of uh, uh, social reform, reforms uh, which were uh, uh, conquered in the, in the past through, through very, very hard uh, struggles. And that, that are now at risk or uh, already being taken uh, uh, taken away, and uh, the solution from from a capitalist point of view, there is not a real solution. Uh, and uh, by the way, the fact that both in the U.S. and in Europe and in Great Britain, it is the main poles of the world financial systems. Uh, the fact that uh, a policy was applied in, la in these last four years that at any cost they have to save the, the financial systems by giving uh, an incredible amount of money to, to, to the banks and to the financial institution Paradoxic parad paradoxically is one of the explanation why the crisis is lasting so long for such a long time. Because from a, from a capitalist point of view, the only way to come out of, the, of a crisis is to destroy the excess capital and to destroy the fictitious capital, which was uh, which ex ex exploded enormously in the last uh, decades. And the fact that they are stubbornly trying to avoid this is precisely one of the reasons why the, the crisis goes on uh, and spreads from one country to to another, and uh, the political answer they give is that uh, they should, we should uh, go towards uh, an increasing economic and political integration of, uh, of the European Union and of the Eurozone, but uh, first of all this is impossible, I mean that uh, on the contrary there will be, it will be more and more difficult to find common policies fit for all the countries of the European Union. And uh, the truth is uh, that the, the real movement in, is in the opposite direction. That is, uh, in, uh, there are cracks opening inside the European Union and inside the, the, different, the different areas of the Eurozone. Uh, as, uh, as we always said, from a, from, from a Marxist point of view, there cannot be a, a European unification uh, under capitalism, on capitalist basis. basis. And uh, if this is tried, the consequences are the most reactionary and uh, regressive that we, you, you can think of. We have seen in this uh, 20, 30 years, and we, are, we, we now see partic with a particular uh, clearness. Uh, any attempt to put together, to find a common economic policy, common budget policy uh, com, uh, uh, in the Eurozone means to go on faster and deeper with these austerity programs, which uh, are a nightmare. Just to give one figure, for Italy, the, uh, the approval of the so-called fiscal compact, that is the idea of the reducing public debt in 20 years, until the, under the ceiling of 60% of the GDP would mean on paper to cut every year for 20 years 40 billion uh, euros from the state budget of 40 to 45. Which is, uh, if, if that would be done, that would simply destroy the economy. Just to give an example, the whole of the national health system costs about 120 billion Euros. This means that in two years and a half you would destroy all 
elements of a public health uh, system in Italy. And the same for school, for university, for pensions, and uh, and uh, and so on. And uh, so the the, the, the contradiction is so, are so sharp, so so tense that uh, it is inevitable that uh, they will explode what they are now. They will result in a real massive and uh, uh, stormy social and political explosions in Italy too, like in, in all the other countries. And I would add that the more is, it is delayed and uh, uh, the more it will be a, a thunderous event and uh, with elements of uh, uh, uncontrollable social explosion which uh, uh, you can already see if you look under the surface of this apparent uh, calm in uh, society, this uh, apparent uh, passivity in, uh, in, in the political scene. Well, uh, Italy entered uh, the, the Euro, the process of building the Euro, which uh, having already a big uh, state debt, uh, it reached a maximum of uh, 100 and 24% approximately of the GDP and uh, this was uh, due to many reasons uh, which are uh, related to, to the bourgeois politics of the last uh, decades. I mean, first of all, uh, all the main companies and were uh, well benefited from general state help starting from Fiat and all the others. Uh, up, to, up until a certain point also the state tried to buy social peace in certain periods uh, through, through by indebting itself and that was also related to widespread corruption which exists uh, in Italian politics but in Italian capitalism as a whole and uh, so they, 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 they tried to reduce it uh, at the beginning of the 90s Particularly the center-left coalition, uh, which was uh, supporting uh, the governments in 1992, 1993, and then from 1996 to 2001, they made a massive round of privatizations. I think that Italy privatized something like 110 billion euros of uh, state industries, the, uh, formerly state-owned banks, and uh, many other assets. Uh, but uh, particularly big uh, industrial uh, groups in, in steel, in telecommunication, in chemicals, in transport, and in telecommunications, and uh, in IT. And uh, they were either destroyed or privatized or sold to private and uh, quite often foreign uh, investors. And also they began to attack the pension system, the state, uh, the public education and university, uh, and so on. And by this means, uh, they managed to reduce it somewhat. Uh, but it was always above the, the, the ceiling of 100% uh, of the GDP. I think that the, the lowest point was 100.7. Uh, also given to a favorable uh, relatively favorable uh, economic situation with the economic growth in the 90s and uh, an export boom after the devaluation of the lira uh, which allowed to reduce uh, uh, for, for a short while the, 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 the public uh, debt. Uh, the point is that uh, this was very short-lived and uh, as soon as the economic uh, international situation be began to deteriorate, uh, Italy was tar clearly targeted as one country of uh, uh, at risk, uh, one risky country uh, as far as uh, state debt is concerned and uh, therefore the, uh, the Italian state found increasingly uh, costly to get more loans. The difference, the spread between the, the Italian bonds and German uh, or US bonds began to widen and, uh, and uh, when the crisis erupted, uh, although there were not uh, big, big uh, savings yet, 
of uh, private banks and so on. But I think that they will come because the crisis now is in the banks very, very clearly. Uh, the, the, the position very f the, the deteriorated very, at a very fast uh, pace. And, uh, and now we are again well over 120% of, of the GDP, of the public uh, debt is well over the, that figure. And uh, so this started a, a certain debate because the watch war, particularly when Berlusconi government was uh, removed, it was actually removed by, by the common decision of all the main centers of Italian and international capitalism because they, they thought it, that it was too weak to, um, uh, to implement such harsh measures as they, as they need, and it was uh, uh, the Monti government was uh, put into office. The, the terminology, the propaganda, the ideas was precisely a war propaganda. We must uh, pay back the debt. We lived uh, above our uh, possibilities, and uh, which is quite fun to be, to be told by people who work for Goldman Sachs for hundreds of thousands of euros or dollars uh, wage uh, every year and uh, and therefore basically we had uh, two main positions in the political debate uh, the government said uh, we must uh, pay full stop and therefore every measure is justified for that and uh, the center left and also the trade union leaders who said well we accept the idea that the debt must be repaid of course we must be serious, as they say, we must do our homeworks. <laughs> but uh, we would like to have it uh, done in a, how do you say, uh, more human way, more uh, with more equality. The rich people should also pay something, and we should not destroy the economy by repaying the debt. And, but uh, it was it. Basically, it was just noise because after after all, they voted in, they, they, they voted everything in parliament, and as far as the trade union leaders, they did absolutely nothing to to, to stop these measures, particularly the counter reform of pensions, which was very very uh, hard and came on top of 20 years of gradual counter reform. So. When uh, in some sectors of the left, of the trade union left, of uh, more left-wing forces, including the Refondazione uh, Comunista and other forces, uh, uh, a debate came out on the question, is it, is it uh, really necessary and correct that we assume we have to pay for this debt? We thought it was a, a step forward because uh, it was uh, in a situation of national unity, of uh, uh, Union Sacre, uh, at, at last someone began to say, well, uh, we shouldn't be paying. The workers, the pensioners, the, the youth shouldn't be paying for that. And so we did participate in both in the debate and also in the organization of the movement, which as a matter of fact was not a mass movement, was uh, the, the biggest uh, event that was organized by the so-called No Debt Committee was on the 31st of, of March in, in Milan, a national demonstration in Milan, which ended up in uh, Piazza Fari, which is where the stock exchange was situated. And uh, it was mainly, uh, uh, so it was not a massive demonstration like the ones we, we saw in Spain last days, but mainly an attempt to rally an, a, a vanguard, a, a most, most active layer uh, around the idea that we cannot allow that uh, all the political debate and all the public debate is just around this position of national unity. And in, in this sense we thought and we still think that it was correct to organize this uh, campaign and to try to rally, to, 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 to gather people together on this, on this, uh, on this point. But uh, of course, this in itself is, uh, is just a step, and uh, there are also there are both uh, uh, from the political point of view and from the theoretical or programmatic point of view, of course, many points that uh, needs to be deepened because uh, from uh, 
from from the point of view of the of the, of the program we put forward, uh, of course the idea that the working class must not pay for the crisis is absolutely correct. Uh, but this doesn't just uh, reduce itself to the idea of default, because the, some radical economists uh, put forward the idea that the point is that the states must have the right to default like a private enterprise or like a, a family when uh, they cannot uh, repay their debts. And it uh, seems, they, they, seems that this idea was very, very clever, very, very attractive. But as a matter of fact, uh, the question of the national debt is just one aspect, one manifestation of the crisis, if you like. And uh, to default can uh, mean many different things. Uh, in, in many revolutions in history, deb debts were not repaid, of course, starting from the Russian Revolution, the French Revolution, and, uh, and so on. But uh, in itself, the idea of default was uh, bent to uh, another meaning. That is, that uh, could be enough to avoid the worst consequence of the crisis without questioning the system as a whole. For instance, the, the, the examples were given of Argentina, when uh, in 2001, 2002, uh, the, uh, the, the, the country defaulted, the, the banks collapsed and the national currency which was linked to the US dollar was, uh, uh, well, broke the link and, and felt uh, considerably. And uh, many people on the left, many economists said, well, after all, after that crisis, after that default, Argentina uh, recovered uh, quite a lot and now the position is not as bad as it was before. But this is very superficial uh, analysis. But first of all, the default in Argentina was paid by the people, by the pensioners, by the petty bourgeoisie, by the little savings of many people who lost everything, or almost everything. Secondly, they paid with several years of uh, real misery in the country, mass unemployment and, re and hunger. And thirdly, wages are still very, very low. Argentina used to be one of the richest countries of Latin America, even on an international scale. It was well placed and now this is no longer the case but the most important thing is uh, that uh, after 2002 for several years the international uh, uh, economic uh, situation was uh, completely different from the one we have nowadays and Argentina is a strong exporter both of uh, particularly of um, um, agricultural uh, commodities and so on could benefit from a strong demand from China, from other countries, particularly from China, which allowed uh, her to recover quite fastly. And uh, nothing of this is the case today for, for Greece, for Spain, or for, or for, for Italy. Therefore, we, we, we led a, a polemics against this and other uh, superficial uh, analysis of the nature of the crisis, because at, at, the, at the end, at the, at the, if you look at the, the very essential point, all these analyses start, have a common starting point, although they don't, do not declare it open sometimes. That is that you can separate finance or finance capital from capitalism in general, or that you can have a good finance and bad finance, and you must just fight the bad finance, the speculations and so on, and to, to save the, the good finance. This is uh, pure Keynesianism, both from a theoretical and a practical point, uh, point of view. And, uh, and I, I think that this is, not, this is linked to a, a, the dream that we can some way go back to the 60s or to the 50s, to the so-called uh, 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 golden era of the golden era of, uh, golden age of the post-war boom and of the uh, Keynesian policies, which dominated the left, which were completely hegemonic in the ideology of the trade union bureaucracy of many political parties of the left, including the Communist Party in Italy, for instance, particularly in the 70s. The leadership spoke about the alliance between the producers, the producer being the workers and industrial capitalists against rent and interest. 
and of course it uh, turned out very badly because uh, the alliance was between all the sections of the capital against the working class. This from the point of view of uh, the analysis. And from the point of view of uh, political action, we think that uh, the point is not to choose one, this or that point, uh, programmatic point, to build a movement on it, in a, like in a vacuum, but rather to try to open, to enlarge to this debate, to use this initiative to create, if you like, some shockwave, uh, uh, to enlarge the, the, the discussion and the action in the mass organizations, in the trade unions particularly, uh, trying to reach the active layer first of all, and then the, the, the whole of the working class and of the uh, other sectors of society which are now being kicked hard by, by these austerity policies. And uh, because uh, this is the only way to, to, to reach a, a force which could actually stop and combat against these policies. And uh, this is... Uh, also a, a point of polemics, if you like, because internationally there has been a, a sort of campaign saying the point is to build committees to review the origin of a national debt to see which part of it, of it should be repaid, which part should not be repaid, and so on, which is uh, basically a nonsense. It's a waste of time, as a matter of fact. Uh, the point is not to enlighten the people on their misery. The people know very well that the situation is becoming miserable. The point is to indicate how to organize the necessary strength to uh, uh, resist and to overthrow these governments which are now uh, putting forward basically all the same policies. And uh, therefore, uh, in, a, in a very classical way, we could say that we have uh, a theoretical battle, and a, a political battle and, and a trade union battle which must be linked together uh, upon uh, and the only way to link them together is to, to give a, a whole, uh, 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 not a one-sided by, the, by a, a complete explanation from a theoretical point of view of the nature of this crisis and of the peculiar nature of the crisis of, uh, of uh, European capitalism which is of course part of the global crisis, but uh, it's got its own specific uh, features. I would say just this, uh, uh, look, <laughs> look closely to Italy because you will see many interesting things in the next few months. <laughs> I mean, what we, what we saw in, in, in Greece uh, has got an interesting point among, amongst many, which could be, could be that one, one point I want to raise. We saw that in a very short space of time, or in a relative, relatively short space of time, the left-wing forces could be faced by the task of indicating a, not just an opposition program, but a way out for the whole of society from, from the crisis. This is the meaning of the election of the results of uh, Syriza. And this will happen in many other countries. And therefore there, there is a big responsibility of the left-wing activists, of the left-wing militants in, all, in the communist parties uh, or in, 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 in all the left-wing organizations. I, I would say all the forces who are outside this grand coalition logic, this national uni, unity logic, and uh, who want to fight against these policies, to understand that uh, we must raise up to, a, to a, a new level of comprehension and a new level of our tasks, because the point is the opposition, mass opposition, is ine inevitable and will come in all the countries. And uh, if we don't want just to be a, a detail of the events, we must be able to, uh, to work, uh, uh, to elaborate around the, the idea of uh, sort, not, not just sorting out of the crisis, as they say, but how to sort out of the system, which is the main point and uh, things that could be could uh, seem very far like for instance w what would a, a left-wing government do in a situation like this can become very urgent uh, in, in the space of few months or a, or a couple or a couple of years therefore we should work we should uh, uh, go back and discuss around the the, the, the general uh, uh, perspective 
of, of, of the transition or the set of transitional demands, not only on the question of the debt, but on the question of unemployment, of casualization, of social of welfare, of pensions, of education, of international politics, uh, uh, around the idea of, uh, uh, of the transitional program, that is the, the sort of program which is needed precisely at the time of violent crisis and dislocation of society. Because after all, what we saw in, and what we are witnessing now in, in Spain, in Greece, in France, is that uh, despite uh, all the things they said for, two, for 30 years, not only the working class still exists, but it's, it's still the, the, the force which can rally all the other oppressed layers in society in, in, a, in, a, in a struggle for a real change, for a, for a, for a change of the system, the full, uh, the, 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 the task, the, the, the urgent task of uh, any left-wing uh, uh, activist is to, to discuss and to, to concentrate on this, on this point, not to, to be uh, how do you say, uh, derailed or uh, uh, enchanted by the, uh, the false uh, political debate which is going on amongst the bourgeois politicians, but to, to make first a, f a serious ideological break, which is necessary also to have a, a real break in society in our fight when the, when the time come, comes and the, the time seems quite right uh, everywhere now. Do you want to put forward some points of a left-wing government? Or, or a yes, I think that uh, the a left-wing government in a position like Greece or like Italy or Spain should, uh, should advance some uh, some very clear points. First of all, the, the, the rejection of these austerity plans. We, we are not prepared to, to pay one more cent from the pensions or from the state uh, education or from welfare in general. We should uh, argue for the uh, um, nationalization or renationalization of all these as assets, starting from the big banks, but also. Uh, uh, utilities, transport, uh, or cases like, like Italy, also big industrial, uh, big industries, which have been privatized in the last uh, 20 years, and also all these uh, big uh, uh, concerns in industrial groups, which are now, uh, which are now um, in, in a deep crisis, threatening to. Uh, to sack thousands of workers, such is the case of Fiat, for instance, in Italy. All these resources must be put at the disposal of the public. And the only way to do this is, first of all, to expropriate them, to nationalize them, and secondly, to concentrate them in a, in a general economic plan under the control of the working class of the, uh, and, and of the people in general, and also uh, the citizens who benefit from the, uh, their services. And uh, thirdly, I think that uh, the, the question of, uh, of the debt, of course, must be, um, uh, must, m must be discussed. Of, uh, but if, if, if we start from the idea that uh, most of the debt now is uh, in the hands of, uh, uh, of big banks, of, uh, of big uh, financial institutions, the, the idea is not just the question of to pay or not to pay back uh, this debt or part of it, but to take uh, control of all the resources they have, which, which are uh, absolutely needed. Another po important point is the question of uh, unemployment, which is uh, exploding everywhere, and therefore the question of a real and serious reduction of the working week and also of the working life, because every, everywhere they are, they are forcing people to work for longer, long, not, 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 not only longer hours, but longer years in, in their life. And uh, institution, as far as CITRA is concerned, of a, uh, a real uh, uh, unemployment wage, which does not exist. And uh, these sort of points, uh, which are not the solution, but measures of initial self-defense in order to uh, avoid this catastrophe which is uh, impending upon us.